Uh, and I'm always intrigued with how you came up with the name Flying Pig Pest Control. Well, I wanted to, I wanted something <laughs> local, um, and I just came up with a few names and talked to some family and friends, asked them what they liked best, and, um, and uh, you know, I, I kind of resemble Boss Hog in many ways. <laughs> you know, uh, Oh no! You so lost a lot of weight. I did, but I still enjoy cigars. So okay, yeah, so. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, we 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 like the local appeal, and uh, uh, of course, we can have a lot of fun. When yeah, you have right. to explain mm-hmm. it. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and you know, uh, there's in Cincinnati, but there's only one rock and roll real estate agent. That's right. <clears throat> so that kind of separates mm-hmm. me from others, and they ask, well. How do you put rock and roll and music together? Well, that's another topic, but <laughs> you do a good job at it. <laughs> that's for sure. At everything, that's right. Yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> so it, um, and and <clears throat> for you, you must be doing a great job because you're busy as a bee. I am. <laughs> it is. We're it's that time of year uh-huh. as well, and just uh, all the bugs are coming out. And... So, um, you, you, his homes, um, termite inspection came back that says active Mm -hmm. and the owner said no way i never saw anything i didn't see them so how do you know you have termites uh several uh, there are a few different ways Uh, this time of year we're getting into what they call the termite swarm season where the reproductive termites come up out of the um, come out of the soil into the structure they typically follow a uh a termite mud tube or some path into the house. And they, mm-hmm. These are the reproductive termites. They're swarming in uh, their purpose is to mate and start a new colony there. So if one mating pair becomes, uh, if one mating pair survives and gets back to the soil, they start a new colony. Now they swarm by the hundreds or the thousands, looked like, uh, look like ants and those are, they can be pretty overwhelming there. that's the main thing you'll see this time of year mm-hmm. this is when we get a lot of calls uh, you can see termite damage in the house whether it's uh, damaged wood um, or you can see uh, termite shelter tubes or what looks like little mud tubes mm-hmm. about the width of a pencil and so if you see anything that looks like that you call a professional and we'll come out and make sure that they're termites for one thing right because they can be mistaken for other things as well, but uh, that's what you want to look for. And of course, don't try, going. don't try and do it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> termites or not, and yeah, you know, I mean, typically people say, "Oh, I don't have termites. Not to worry about that." Well, you, you just never know. So, it take mm-hmm. a long time for termite to do a lot of damage. It does. It takes quite a while. Uh, so don't let uh, <clears throat> don't let an inspector um, make it sound like your house is going to fall down tomorrow because oh, i get that a lot yeah, yeah exactly a lot of inspectors uh get paid by the sale mm. um, i'm not saying there's something wrong with that necessarily but uh, uh you just have to be your time if you have someone come out and <clears throat> give you an estimate or price quote on termites you can always get another opinion mm-hmm. and another price quote sure and and yeah your prices are pretty much the I'm not going to say the same, but similar throughout the industry, I suppose. <clears throat> yeah, it, if if something sounds way too high or way too low, you may want to question it and, <clears throat> and get some other quotes. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you see, and, and when these swarmers emerge from the ground on the exterior of your home, and I know I've seen them come out. I mean. Just a, I call it a gazillion of them, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and they make coat up and and stick to your window or something, and they only they only last a couple of days, don't they? Yes, correct. Typically a warmer day, uh, and typically a, a sunny day during the springtime, is when they're going to emerge. If you see them in the fall, or if you see them, you know, later on in the summer, or any other time of the year than you know uh, March, April, May. Um, there's a good chance that it's not termites, a good chance that they could be winged ants. And that's why you want to get someone to let you know what you're really dealing with there. Yeah, I guess you have to know the difference between a winged ant and a termite. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Knowing the, the type of, in, I mean, they're little bitty things. You get a magnifying glass out and take a look at them or you right off. Uh, homeowners would be better served to use a magnifying glass. 
there. And of course, you can go on Google and see the the photos, <laughs> and, you know, the diagrams showing the difference between <laughs> the two. Uh, a trained eye can tell right away without a magnifying glass and all that. <laughs> but uh, you definitely want to know which one it is because the the method by which you treat is going to be different, and one's going to be a lot more expensive than the other. Mm-hmm. So if you have ants and you think they're termites and you get your house treated for termites, you spend a lot of money that you should not have spent. Mm, that's true, yeah. So, so yeah, I had uh, was in, in a transaction. The um, <clears throat> The buyer actually walked. This was years ago, and she was buying a five- or six-year-old new new home and there was evidence of termites and she freaked out i mean she's oh mm-hmm. my house is gonna fall down and, and she walked she didn't want to buy, have anything to do with the house I always tell <clears throat> buyers and sellers or had termites <clears throat> you're gonna have termites or you do have them <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah it's one of the three i mean that's the way it is in cincinnati like cincinnati's weather yeah it's just a matter <clears throat> of time <clears throat> termites will find the house eventually yeah. So they get it tested this week, and there's no evidence. But six months from now, they could have. Yes, certainly. Yeah, termites are working all year round, and of course they're uh, they get closer to the house, top of the so- uh, closer to the top of the soil during the warmer weather. Of course, yeah, you can have a, your house could be free and clear of termites now, not. Mm-hmm not be later on even yeah so let's talk about new construction i have a lady buying a, a brand new patio home <clears throat> they're just um no we did the walkthrough yesterday we're closing next week and i mean it's brand spanking new and the builder contracted with a pest control company to do preventative maintenance for termites mm-hmm. right away and they put those baitment systems in and uh, walking around, I noticed they had the little gray cylinder things. They were right up against the foundation. Okay. Is that proper monitoring termites? Uh, you, you want them close to the foundation, <clears throat> and you typically want them put out a couple feet away from the foundation. Oh, oh this, this wasn't yeah. even inches. This was okay. right next to the foundation. The stations to be out away from the house enough, out from under, you know, out from under mm-hmm. the, the drip line. So people walk around the house and they can see, even when it rains, where it's dry right next to the house. And you don't want, that's not where you want the bait stations. You want them out a little bit where there's more moisture. And termites are going to find them more easily, more quickly that way. So placement of these bait stations is important. Yeah. And later on in the show, we'll talk about the difference of types of treatments that you can offer that, one may be better than, than another, depending on the home, I guess. <clears throat> um, so what, what can homeowners do to prevent termites? Um, I got a little report here. It says one is eliminate ground-to-wood contact. Yes, certainly. Uh, you want wood in contact <coughs> with the ground. Uh, now, that keep termites out necessarily because termites need only a very, very small crack to get into the house and even... <coughs> Even some newer places have cracks large enough for termites to enter. Mm-hmm. So uh, inspection is a big is is uh, is is one of the, is the best way to go. Just have your house inspected on a regular basis. Home inspectors will give you a FYI on when they do a home inspection and explain that you need to have the ground next to the house to swell away from the home, mm-hmm. and they might recommend putting some some more topsoil in next to the foundation to build it up, but you don't want that to go up to where the wood framing is on the house. Yeah, keep <clears throat> keep the soil away from the <clears throat> siding so that termites do not have a more easy way to get into the house. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as putting the soil up next to the house and sloping it away, that's, uh, that's a great idea because... Um, all pests need moisture, and, and the way you control moisture around your house will determine, in many ways, how bad of an infestation or, or what, what, what insects you're going to have to deal with in the future. Right. So. Uh, reduce moisture and humidity in crawl spaces. And the, <clears throat> the one few months ago that you went on was they actually had a crawl space, and um, 
<clears throat> they had a lot of moisture in there. I know you had to mm-hmm. treat for termites, and we had to have dry effect come in and treat for mold because there was so much moisture in there that uh, created a, a moldy atmosphere. So, um, And this one I see a lot going. People will have a wood-burning fireplace, and they stack their wood up right up next to the house. Yep, get it away from the house. <laughs> <clears throat> Put it out by the shed or somewhere else uh, where you can keep it dry, but keep it away from the house. And, um, of course, this time of year, people are going to buy truckloads of mulch, and they're going to put mulch around their trees and their mm-hmm. bushes, and they're going to stack, you know, five or six inches of mulch around the house, and you got to be careful with that, too. The mulch might have insects in them. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's better to stick with more of like the pine <coughs> bark, pine needle mulch than it is the, the shredded mulch. Gotcha. Less pest issues there. Well, the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour is brought to you today by Paul Redwine, the boss hog at Flying Pig Pest Control, and his number is 513-993-5455, or go to flyingpigpest.com. My guest this morning is Paul Redwine with Flying Pig Pest Control. We call him the boss hog. <clears throat> Rightfully so. That's me. Yep. So we we talked last segment about termites. But uh, there's a lot of other pests. In fact, when you do an inspection for a, a real estate sale, it's everybody calls it a termite inspection, but you're actually it's a wood-destroying insect inspection. Yes. We yeah. need like to clarify that because mm-hmm. there's what that are at time of year. Uh, <clears throat> pretty much all of them. <laughs> it's just that time of year where pretty much everything is coming out. But most notably, uh, ants are going to be coming out. More this year, you're going to see a lot of those. Um, you're going to you're going to see a lot of outdoor pests. Uh, ants and termites are probably the biggest ones there. You're going to see some stinging insects start coming out, and they're going to yeah. Let's talk about the, the stinging well. insects like bees and wasps. How can we avoid getting stung while we're barbecuing on our patios or in the backyard this summer? Well, the biggest thing to remember is the threat when they feel threatened. So. <clears throat> When you get close to their home, their hive, for example, mm-hmm. that's when they're going to be the most aggressive. They're not coming out and looking for you at the standing at the grill so they can come out and sting you. Oh, so, okay. So they're really mm-hmm. not a threat then. It's when you get close to uh, where the yellow jackets are coming out of that hole or where those hornets are coming out of their hive in that mm-hmm. tree, those areas. So it's, uh, it's just using common sense and staying away from from where where they are there sure if you grab them or step on them they're going to sting you but swat them around and yeah. say, ah. just 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 don't go to their home and threaten them <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> they won't retaliate if you're not going to threaten you yeah. there is a particular kind of bee and a lot of people don't realize this is called a carpenter bee yes yeah. they don't have a stinger uh the females do sting they can sting okay yes. didn't know that <laughs> but uh they are not out to just sting you. They're they're going to have to be threatened in order to. Uh, it's it's very difficult to get stung by a, a carpenter bee. But they can drill a perfect quarter inch hole mm-hmm. at the bottom end of a two by twelve of your deck, and you think, so, well, who came along and drilled those holes in the bottom of my deck? And the carpenter yeah. bees. Yeah, it's a dime size hole and. <clears throat> Like you said, perfectly round. They drill up about an inch or two, and then they go over about four inches. And the eggs in those galleries, and those eggs will hatch out eventually. And uh, you also get damage from the exit holes of those as well. It attracts uh, woodpeckers and other birds as right. well going <laughs> after those insects also. So and <clears throat> the woodpeckers aren't going to follow the hole. They're going to drill right straight through the end of it mm-hmm. and damage your, your floor joists. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so let's, how about these, the, the crawling insects, like you mentioned ants, we got spiders and cockroaches. How do we keep them from coming into our house? <clears throat> uh, coming in, you want to do what we call in the industry exclusion, you know, keep the keep the doors closed. Uh, your garage door, for example, uh, does it have a nice seal on the bottom of it? If you go inside, your garage with the lights out during the daytime close the garage door do you see any light coming in mm-hmm. and that's that's a good way to determine uh, <coughs> some entry points for insects and places like that gotcha so keep them out as much as you can 
reduce the moisture. We talked about that earlier. Right, right, yeah. exactly. So. <clears throat> so aren't many flying insects really good for pollination of our flower and vegetable gardens? Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, for that reason, um, professionals who are treating for pests, um, as well as homeowners, if they're going to treat around the outside of the house, you need to avoid spraying the flowers. Mm. You know, uh, avoid the flowering plants. Uh, treat under with them, inspect, them with, ins- with, with, with the insecticide. Yeah. Yes, yes. Stay away from those because uh, if, if you spray those flowers, even after it dries out, the uh, the insect, the honeybee, the, whatever pollinator that gets on that can get infected and they don't die right away. They, they take it back to the others. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you need to apply <clears throat> insecticides according to the label and in a very judicious manner. So you don't want to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and just pick up a, a big can of Raid and start spraying all your, no. <laughs> your, no. your flower plants. <clears throat> no, there's really no need to spray the flowers at all. Got so one thing that I know you're real passionate about, and that's uh, mosquitoes. It's a major concern for many homeowners because they, they do carry a disease. Some mosquitoes mm-hmm. do. And there are some key uh, suggestions that you can make that can help homeowners minimize the, um, the effects of mosquitoes around their home. Uh, the biggest thing is getting rid of the standing water <clears throat> puddles. Uh, you have tires sitting around your house. There's going to be water in there. Get rid of the standing water. Uh, keep it dry, and you will minimize the mosquitoes. Gotcha. Now, I have a friend, and we just had dinner uh, last week, and they're still battling their mole problem. They've had mm-hmm. moles just tearing up their yard, and they, they just— he just threw his hands up. He says, I give up. You know, they, they win. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> nothing we can do about that. And I, I didn't know, but you, you take care of moles as well because yeah. <clears throat> I have groundhogs and skunks and, of course, squirrels are rampant right now. They did a lot of damage to my roof. <clears throat> um, but um, so I always call our friend Russ Weiss with A to Z <laughs> Wildlife, and he, he can come out and trap these these varmint and and haul them off for you but um yeah, Russ a is different a great, critter. Yeah, he's a great critter guy yeah for sure. yeah yeah but you can handle you you mm-hmm. do moles yes yeah, certainly yeah. okay but so. russ uh you know when it comes to the skunks and the raccoons and squirrels uh, definitely call russ there yeah right bring so, him in for the big <laughs> ones i will um i will give doug your phone number which uh by the way the Rock and Roll Real Estate Hour is brought to you today by Paul Redwine, the boss hog at Flying Pig Pest Control. And his number, write this down, is 513-993-455. Or just go to flyingpigpest.com. 